time, Dave Gann. We're out here on a lake catching some really nice bluegills. And a lot of little things go into the, of catching these things. You know, the rod, the reel, the line, the lure, the action of the lure. You know, and we're gonna give you some of them tips. So we're gonna have a lot of fun today. <laughs> we better just drop it down there. And he was there waiting for it. Uh, nice one. Nice male bluegill, male because it's orange in here. The females are yellow. Yeah, I like these big spots on there. When they got that on there. Look at that's bigger than my fingernail, the spot is. Like I always say, it's got to, if it's easy, you'll do it. If it's not, you won't. So it's got to be you know, easy to move from spot to spot. So you got to have a place for everything. You know, one of the things I got here is I just got a little room clip over here. I snapped my rod into it. Nice and easy. Then I can just pick up my depth finder, set it right in here. But I've also done some other modifications to my fish house here. One thing here is I got a, a little rod hammock, I call it here, where I could, I could put my rods and I could have, you know, two, three rods in there and they don't get tangled up. I've got a drink holder over here on the side. Now you notice I got my heater, I got it mounted right in the, in the house here with me. So I keep it running all the time. So when I flip it down, it warms up right away. You know, it comes in and out of there real easy. But yet it's, it's, it's stable in there. When I pull it around, it doesn't tip over. You know, you can see I modified the heater a little here. I put a piece of tin over the front here to keep the radiant heat, the light of the fire from melting things I set in front of it. And I cook sandwiches up on the top there. You'd be amazed the number of things I've set up there. My gloves, uh, my glasses. Well, on the back of my seat here, you can see I got my, my tackle storage here. And, and I got all my the stuff I need to fish with stored right up inside of this bag. Look at that, even spare glasses so I can retie. So just the little things you can do to trick your trap to make it easier and more fun to be out here on the ice. Well, here's a nice fish. You never know when you're out here fishing red lines. Just, just what you might end up with. Oh, look at this. You just never know what you might catch when you're out here fishing these, these lakes. What a nice fish. I'm trying to show you what it was caught on. There it is. Just this little red glow fat boy jig with a piece of plastic on it. You know, that plastic is becoming a bigger and bigger part of ice fishing all the time. Well, there we go. We've got to let this beauty go. Look at that nice sized walleye there. Oh, see ya, buddy. Come back and see me in the summer. Ah, oh, there's one. Not a monster, but a, but a cutter is what we call them. Uh, you know, the good eaters. You know, we talk about balance. You need a balance between the rod, the line, and the lure. The lure has to be heavy enough that it takes all the kinks out of the line so it hangs straight so we can feel that little lure bouncing down there. The rod has to be able to protect that line. Now look at this, oh, I could jerk on this and I can't break that line, but yet the rod loads up, can catch any size fish on here. You know, that, that big walleye we caught was easy to catch on this, on, on this rod because the rod could handle it. Another thing that a lot of people don't realize is that we like to use Vexilar friendly lures, meaning they have flat surfaces on them up here on the top. That flat surface on there, that's what reflects the signal back, the sonar signal back so that I can read it clearly on the, on the dial so I know exactly how deep my hook is with the, the minimum amount of gain. A lot of times in this shallow water, there's weeds and there's a lot of stuff stuff just floating in the water and if you give it too much gain over here see what happens you pick up all these unwanted signals in the water and it's hard to determine what's your hook and and what's the fish and but because i i got this oh i got the fish and once in a while they get caught in the transducer Another thing that's really important is to release these fish. When you get, to, when you find one of these lakes that's got big ones in it, I just like to leave them there so I can come back and catch them over and over again. 
you know, and there's, I know sometimes there's other people there that are keeping them, and then you think, well, geez, if I don't, if I don't keep it, he just will, but, you know, I don't know, if somebody else catches a fish that I released, I count that good, that was catch, that, you know, catch and release worked, if somebody else was able to catch it. Just a little smaller one there. There we go, another dandy bluegill. The size of that thing. So remember, to help you catch more of these giant bluegills like this, there's a lot of little things you gotta put together. There's no magic lure. You know, it's about balance between the rod, the line, and lure. The, the Vexlar friendly lures. You know, fresh live bait. Them are all the things that can make you a better ice fisherman and catch some of these big bluegills when you get the opportunity. So I'm Dave Gens from Midwest Outdoors. Stay tuned, we'll be right back.